Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up the Flutter framework on Windows. If you're interested on Mac or Linux, feel free to check those videos out. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up your web browser and literally just Google Flutter. I'll provide the links to everything that you will need. And no, okay. So now go to flutter.io, go to get started, go to install Windows. And from here, scroll down, click this icon here. This will, it's a button or an icon. This will download the Flutter SDK. I'm gonna cancel it simply because I've already got it downloaded. Now, what you wanna do is go to where you've got it downloaded. So for me, it is in the download directory. And you wanna right click it. And you want to extract all, or extract device seven zip. So just click extract all, click extract. I'm going to click cancel because again, I've already done it. It takes a bit of time. So I've just saved that time for the video. So this is what you will get. And this folder that contains all these folders and files, that's what you want to copy. So if you copy that, go to your C drive. I'd recommend creating a folder called development and putting in everything in there. Do not put it in program files because program files need elevated permissions and that can cause issues later on. So go to development in here, just paste it. I've already done it again, just to save some time in the video, but it's just control C, control V. And once you've pasted it here, what we can actually do is run a, you know, a file from here. And if you scroll down, go to the flutter underscore console dot bat. So this is a batch file. And this will allow us to run flutter commands. But what I'm gonna show you is how to add, which is basically this, how to add the flutter path to your computer so you can run it in any command prompt because if i go on to command prompt and i type in flutter it will work because i've already set it up i'm going to show you how to do this and this allows me to you know actually use flutter in a regular command prompt instead of constantly having to go to this batch file which is a lot better and to do that it's really simple just search for env Go to edit the system environment variables and go to environment variables and now go to path, edit. Now from here, you want to add this. So I'll remove it and I'll just show you what to do. You click new, browse, go to wherever you've you know pasted your Flutter folder, go to Flutter, go to bin, okay, okay, click okay. And that is that part done. Now, if we was in the command prompt, in the command prompt, if we run flutter doctor, so this will tell us the situation with the overall flutter installation. So it's saying flutter is installed correctly because we got a little tick. This part can take a little bit of time for you. These two will probably have a red cross next to it simply because we haven't installed the Android Studio you know, in this video yet, but that's what the next step is. This doesn't really matter unless you really want to use IntelliJ, which you need Android Studio anyway. So you need to do this setup, then install IntelliJ, but this isn't a requirement. And we haven't got a device connected. You can plug one in, obviously make sure it's in development mode if you need any questions. If you have any questions about that, feel free to pop me a message or you can use a simulator, the emulator, which is what we are going to be doing. Well, let me show you the Android Studio part. So what you wanna do now is Google Android Studio, Android Studio. Again, I'll provide a link to all of this. Go to the website, click download, click I have read it, click download. And again, I'm gonna cancel it simply because I've already got it in, you know, downloaded. If you open it up, your executable, which you know, you will have just downloaded. And just wait for it to all load up. Okay, so you just click yes when something like that pops up. And it's waiting for the Android Studio installation to launch up now any moment now okay so i've already got installed so it's going to talk about you know install uninstalling previous version 
yours won't look like this because it'll be a fresh setup you just need to follow the regular steps just keep everything as the recommended amount you can choose to install it in a different directory i chose to install it on my d drive you can choose the default c drive if you want to i cho chose d drive because my c drive isn't you know doesn't have that much space so i install most of my software and games on the d drive but once you've done all of that you will it, it'll take a bit of time because you need to download stuff like the sdk while it's doing it so again just be patient so once it's done that we're ready to actually launch up android studio but before we launch up android studio what we want to do is actually no actually no we'll launch up android studio when we launch up android studio And just wait patiently now. And I'm going to minimize this. This is just opening up a previous application that I had open. So let's close that down. So if I go to File, New, your project will, you know, essentially look something. I mean, the first time you launch it up will look something slightly different to this just because you'll get a new window. And let me actually show you what that will look like. So if I close this down, I would delete this. That is the project. And if I launch Android Studio now, this is what it will look like. But you won't have this start a new Flutter project here. To do that, you go to configure, go to settings, and you, what you want to do is go to plugins. You want to go to browse repositories. Search for Flutter. Go for this regular one here. I've already got it installed. But if you don't, you'll have this green button button here. You click that. Anything that it asks you about installing the Dart, you know, programming language, that's fine. Any other permissions it needs, just click yes. Once that's installed, it shouldn't take long, about a minute or two maximum. You can click close. It'll ask you to reboot the Android Studio and just, you know, click on that. And obviously, I'll just manually reboot it. Go to Android Studio. And you will have this so if i click start a new flutter project so start a new flutter project just do regular flutter application or you can put a specific name i'll put flutter app 2 for or i'll just put flutter app there we go and this should automatically pick up the SDK path. If it doesn't, just click the three dots and navigate to wherever you put it. Project location is where it will be saved. So I'm just going to put it on my desktop and put a default description. Click next and put a company name, which is also known as a package name. You can generate a sample application. Not interested in that for this tutorial. You can put some extra platform languages. So if you want to do some native Android code in Kotlin, you can or some native iOS code in Swift you can as well. But I'm just going to click finish. This will create our Flutter project. And if you know if any of the steps are a little faster for me, don't worry, it's most likely because I've already you know gone through these this setup process. So certain things in the background have already occurred, therefore certain steps might just be quicker for me. Like quite a, like quite a lot quicker. So just be patient if it isn't as fast as mine. That's most likely why. Okay, so now you should have your S Android SDK installed. So with the Android SDK installed, you, you would have come up during the installation when you first launched up Android Studio saying, you know, which Android SDK do you want? Or you go for the recommended. Once you've done all of that, what you want to do, I recommend closing it down just to make sure. You want to go back to the environment variables. So go to env. And you want to basically have this right here. So I delete it, go to new, Android underscore home, click browse directory, go to wherever you put your 
Android SDK where you installed it. I installed it right here. So this is the folder you want. Click OK, click OK, click OK. Now if we launch up Android Studio. And this will launch up our application. We can create a new application if we want. Also, it's always good to have the command prompt open and just run that command of Flutter Doctor to make sure the Flutter installation is well, you know, successfully set up. As you can see, this is a setup. These two for you should now be a tick. If they are not, feel free to you know let me know. Feel free to ask any questions about any errors. It might say something that you haven't accepted the license. And if that's the case, it will actually give you the command literally here for accepting the license. So let's go through that. But this isn't required and we are going to set up a device. You can either plug one in or you can set up the simulator, which is what I'm going to show you right now. To do that, you want to go to this button here, which is the ABD manager. You can also go to it from tools. Either one is fine. And I've already got two devices set up. I'm going to show you how to you know, do it from scratch. Click create virtual device. You can select phone, TV, doesn't really matter. So I'm going to select phone and let's select, yeah, let's do, just do another pixel two, that's fine. And we can just click next. For, the, for here, you either do recommended or if you go to x86, have a look at any one that doesn't have this download button. That means it's already installed. If you want another one, maybe a new one or an older one, just click download and just go through the steps. But I'm going to select this one because it's already installed. So I'm going to click next and you can select the default orientation portrait. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to the name that is fine. You can go to show advanced settings. Make sure here you select on the graphics hardware GLES. So this will use your graphics card. So it's just a little bit faster. Everything else, unless you really want to modify the amount of storage it has access to, the amount of RAM, you can leave as default. Click finish. Now that it's created it, click this play button. This will launch up the emulator. This shouldn't take too long at all. Okay, so as you can see, it's launched up the emulator right here. We can minimize this, and this will soon change from no devices to, well, this emulator. And I would recommend when you are doing development, keep the emulator open. You know, close down the application via, you know, there'll be a red square which just close the application down once we, you know, run it, but don't constantly close down the emulator you're not having to constantly manually reopen it one it takes time for waiting you know at this step you can do the quick boot which is faster but even going to the avd manager it's just unnecessary so while you're you know developing for like two three hours or so in one sprint just keep it open it'll be a lot lot easier from here we can rotate it we can change the volume we can you know take a picture you'll just use like the webcam for example and we, we got the back home and the multitasking button as well we've got the menu button so it still hasn't loaded up yet you might not be able to see but there's a little gray bar that's just going left and right and once we basically get to our home screen on the android emulator that means it's loaded but it has picked it up here so phone is starting it is almost done now it is almost done so once we start seeing the icons yes it is done now if we click run It'll go through a few steps to run our application. So it's launching, launching the up, just ignore this. If any of these steps, the initializing Gradle, the resolving dependencies or the Gradle task takes longer for you, and I'm talking about significantly longer, don't worry because the first time you do it, it will take a long time. Initializing Gradle and resolving dependencies, I think the first time for me took five or 10 minutes. It took a while. So the first time you do it for the first application, just be patient and it will, you know, be successful. So this is it's going to launch up the application any moment now. This is just a default application, but this is important to get it set up so you can develop.
and there we go the default application has now launched so if i click this this just basically counts how many times we have pushed it and you have all of the other environment in android studio and we can just close it down by clicking this button here so that doesn't actually close down the emulator that just closes down the application so if we run this now it's we don't have to go through the process of relaunching this so that's it that's how you set up flutter on windows using android studio if you have any questions if you have any errors along the way because you know that can happen feel free to pop me a message and i will walk you through those errors and i look forward to seeing you in the next video